Right, so yeah, we got this C16 and she's beautiful, but damn, she's dirty. So we're gonna take this machine apart and we're gonna give her a really good clean. So I will start off by opening this thing off, take uh, like the motherboard out of it and pull all the keycaps and everything so the plastic is free to clean. And uh, yeah, that's about what we'll do today. And I will show you guys how I like to clean my computers.
Alright, well, for the caps lock key, you need to actually desolder. So, lift this protective tape first. Probably, I'm probably gonna replace this one with something new. So, we need to get rid of it from here. Whoa, this is sturdy. Okay, so we have desoldered the caps lock key now, and now the bottom part is free to lift off. So take this one, and we'll give this a, a bit of a rub as well. We don't need to go crazy with it, but we'll clean that as well. And now we can remove all these little switches. Okay, and now it's lots easier to give this one a bath. Okay, so it's time to start the actual cleaning process. So here I have the box with the caps in it. And I will put them in like water and some soap for a while and just let it sit there because these ones are very dirty. So we'll do that first. Have a, not cold enough hot either, somewhere in between. And I'll just leave, leave it in here like that. Let them soak for a while. And then we have this, the actual the keyboard holder, or how you put, would put it. It's also really, really dirty. I will give this a spray. I have some since. Previously I was restoring pinball machines, this is called the pinball cleaner. Uh, you can probably do with any kind of cleaning solvent. I'll give this a bit of a... I will pre-wet it with this one. See if it perhaps can dissolve some of the very old dirt and grime. I'm almost out of this, apparently. I'll have enough for this. There's actually stuff left here in the bottom. Yes. Let this sink in for a while. I'll give it a rinse with water and use the kitchen sponge to to wipe it clean, but now, now the dirt should come off a bit easier, I think. It's like 30 years worth of finger grease and stuff in this on this thing. Uh, I didn't realize also that the, the shift lock key gets wet, but it's no problem. I will wait until it dries out before I use this. No, no big issue. That actually helped quite a lot. It's already looking lots better. Get some washing fluid as well and just give it a good rub. Still have to wash it though because I left it in there. I thought that it wouldn't come loose. This particular part I won't wax at all. 
which I will do with the case because this will never actually be visible. I just want this clean so it's not full of like dirt and stuff that's potentially bad for you. Well, let's give it a rinse now more and take a look at the results. This is looking really clean and nice now. So apparently washing helps. Get some of the water out from this. We'll do compressed air later, but I'm just gonna leave this to dry here. While we get on to cleaning the case. do the same procedure on this actually, it has lots of dirt that kind of in this in these lines, let's hope there's something, there is something in here, I'll put it to stop, that won't help. It should dissolve the major part of it. Use some on the interior as well. I want this clean and nice everywhere since we're doing the job. Okay, top is really clean now. Okay, all parts done, except for the keycaps that we need to rub for a bit longer, but so we'll just leave this to dry now. Okay, so it's time to give the buttons a rub, or the caps, and I'll, now I'll use the heavier side of this, and I'll just grind this on them until they look clean. It looks alright, get them a touch of water and put them to dry. Alright, so I have been polishing most of the day and uh, everything is clean now. Uh, the case, uh, well it didn't need some shine, it's it's clean now, it has some dents. I can't really decide though if I should like file it down just slightly or not, but I think I'm gonna let this be. 
I'm afraid that it will lose its black color if I go too deep here. So I will probably just give it some plastic polish and be done with it. And then it's time to reassemble everything. So that's about what's left of this, this part. Okay, for plastic polish I use a 3 to 1 solution from Novus, ex except I, I don't actually use the number 1. So number 3 is a heavy scratch remover and that makes the plastic a bit dull. And then you have the fine scratch remover that you use afterwards, which will make it shine again. Or not really shine, but it will look new and fresh. Uh, the only issues I'm having, I've never used this number three before on black plastic so I will test this on the inside to see if it behaves like I expect it to behave and I like to use it like this to put some something on a plate or whatever and grab a rug and just get like a corner of it wet in this and give it a rub and I'm thinking here on the inside it doesn't really matter if there would be a miscoloration or anything so it's a good place to, to actually test this uh, it looks it looks fine really uh, it does make the plastic a bit dull as I said but we'll take care of that later So you rub that in and then you take a dry piece of cloth after a while and kind of remove the, the residue that comes from the polish. There's really not, nothing else to it, it's just elbow grease pretty much. Right. I can't see any miscoloration or anything, it does look a bit... Uh, does get... get white layer on top but it looks like I can polish it off so I'm not too worried about that so but just in case let's do the bottom part first it doesn't matter as much and this has some interesting scratches or something from previously uh, probably was sitting on a cord or something for a while and kind of melted into the plastic Looks like those sort of things. But it's underneath anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What you do need to watch out for with this uh, is like these vent holes and stuff if this gets in it's very hard to get out and it will leave like a white surface like powder surface afterwards which is very annoying so make sure you don't overuse this get a clean rag and try to remove the, the residues. It actually looks like it's turning a bit white here with the inside. I might not use the number three actually on the top. I will use the number two now for a while and, and then we decide look good or not put a pile on that one I'm gonna grab myself a new corner of this and 
rub it out. Looks like it's coming back to black. I'll do half of it first and then we can compare sides. Okay, I think it starts to look good now. I don't know, it might be hard to see from the light and all that. Looks like nice and clean. On the inside I want polish because it's clean and that's good enough. It's not it's not like I'm gonna watch that from anywhere nearby okay so for the top I decided to not go with the number three first I would jump straight into number two because the top is not as scratched as the bottom one was Not too bad at all. Let's put this together and have a look. Looks pretty damn good. I have some something left here. Should I use the toothpick to just scrape off and see something here? Oh no, that was actually just plastic. Okay, I'm gonna rub off this with, with some isoprop and I'll, I won't do it too excessive, just a, a bit of a clean since we're in here. And uh, I, I don't think I don't think this is needed actually. I'll pull this a bit dirty. So no, why not? No, but I won't won't rub them too hard because I don't want anything bad happening with them. They look good, just a bit dirty. This is uh, awesome, it's like getting drunk for free. Sort of free anyway. <clears throat> Okay, so for all the switches, I just give them a quick rub with regular baby wipes. Uh, just to take whatever disgusting thing is on these. And these appear to be perfect for the task. They're, they're good for taking away disgusting stuff.
So when I put this back, I like to put this next to the table because they need to go through. Then it's just a matter of popping them back in. One in every hole. Okay, now we all, all we have to do is screw this on, back on, and uh, then uh, re-solder the shift lock here. So I'll put the, the corners in first, in case I drop this, so not all of them will fall out. Right, next step. So all the switches are back. So now we're gonna put the springs on and press the buttons back. And to my assistance, I have made a print out of how it was before. So in case I wonder how they, how they should sit. And I don't know, I guess we'll just start populating this. We usually do like part of the keyboard first and then continue <clears throat> putting springs on if I put them all they will just fly away Well, the cleaning is done and we did a good polish on the computer as well. Our Commodore 16 looks better than it ever has. Uh, perhaps it looked better from factory, but it still looks pretty damn good. <laughs> uh, however, our work is not done yet with this machine. We'll give it some more upgrades and some good things to make it live a bit longer and become a bit more useful. Uh, guys, subscribe, like, comment, dislike whatever the youtube stuff you do and also make sure to follow me on twitch where i live stream c64 and amiga games four times a week right over and out see you